ice in the winter. I sell fire in hell. I am a hustler, baby. I sell water to a well. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jake Williams, let's live life, and we're back. I've missed you guys. How are you all doing? Back with a crazy story today. Real quick, let me give y'all some updates so we can get right into today's story. I've been revamping the channel. I need to bring y'all the best that I can bring y'all. So I've been investing in new cameras, microphones, all this different software. I just want to revamp things so that I can give y'all what I see in my head. I don't feel like what I've been producing is the same thing I see in my head. So it's time to change things up a little bit and that's exactly what you guys are gonna see coming. Got a new intro I put together, same music, just a new intro, new ways of transitioning these scenes and things I can add to my videos. I'm really excited about it and I hope you guys enjoy it. This coming week, y'all can expect to start seeing all that new product. You can start to see the, the, the channel and the changes taken and I hope y'all enjoy it. So as soon as you see that new intro, you can be like, oh, this is what he's talking about. Let's go. So stupidity, stupidest fights. I'm gonna do a bunch of these because most of the fights I saw were behind something stupid. And what a better way to spark it off by than telling one of my stupidest fights. One of my dumb moments in life, being 19 years old and locked up in a jail that you didn't want to be in. Surrounded by dudes that didn't like you. They didn't like me just on the fact that I was white. Taking your eyes off somebody, thinking you know it all, running your mouth, putting yourself in situations that you shouldn't be in. Anytime you're the underdog, especially while locked up, the last thing you should be doing is running your mouth, whether it's to the other guys that are locked up or them guards. Sometimes doing that, it put a big red target on you and don't be surprised when something happens to you. Now I'll tell y'all quick, I do not glorify being locked up. None of y'all should ever do any of the things you hear on this channel. Go try and reenact anything or think that being locked up is gonna be cool. It is gonna be the worst time of your life. You're gonna hate your life. You're gonna be lonely, miserable. There's a chance you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna be put in situations you don't wanna be put in. Just stay out here, stay free. Be all you can be and live your best life. Do not, and I repeat, do not commit crimes and go get locked up. Somebody's gonna smash your girl. Oh yeah. So anyways, today we are doing stupidest fights I saw. Starting off with my fight at 19 years old. How everything went, how it took place, how it went down, and why it happened. These things can be avoided, but uh, common sense back then and today just ain't all that common anymore. I can say 100%, I did not have common sense at 19 years old. If I had common sense, well, let's see. Hmm. I wouldn't have been locked up. <laughs> but all that being said, man, y'all know I done seen it. You know I done lived it. So, let's relive it. You ever see something and it instantly take your mind off of whatever it was just on? That's exactly what just happened to me. I was getting ready to go into this first story. And for my Richmond dudes, Virginia dudes, Southside dudes, we're out here beside Hillside Court. One of the more notorious projects here in Richmond. Everybody knows about Hillside. A lot of homicides out here. It's been going down for the longest time. I'm getting ready to push you know, the record button to start my video. And I'm driving down the street and I go to make a right at this corner. And right down the corner there's a whole bunch of teddy bears and flowers next to a utility pole. There's still crime scene tape torn off and hung from the side of the fence. Well, somebody got killed last week. Which then got me to thinking about what happened Monday. Monday morning, I'm going down Broad Street and we're working in another bad part of Richmond, Afton. And I'm headed down Broad Street and I cut up through, I usually cut through, through Church Hill. And I look over to my right on Franklin Street and there's a crime scene, there's a body. Why I seem to always come across these incidents where there's bodies laid out, I don't know. Maybe it's God constantly reminding me of how things end, how things can get bad real quick. But anyways, I'm turning by Franklin Street and I look over and they've got the white sheet out and the person covered up and homicide detectives and them are all out there. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, damn, man, my city is messed up. I look to my left 
and there's a black dude standing on in front of a building and this dude's like moonwalking high out of his mind break dancing you know when somebody's just doing something to do it and when somebody's high because like you can tell there's music playing in their head but nobody else can hear it i'm looking over and this dude is high out of his mind i look over at the bus stop and there is a white chick in a halter top that should not have been wearing that top um she just shouldn't she's like a bag of bones with a rubber band on and this girl is literally doing cheers, like cheerleading at the bus stop, like high out of her mind. Meth has taken its toll on Richmond. And both of them, I guarantee you would have burned a hole in the bottom of the cup if they peed in it. How are you at a bus stop and barely anything, looking like a female skeletal, like a praying mantis, doing cheers give me a r i'm just looking like and these two were doing this and right over there is a body and the cops are just looking at them like damn tweakers and then i drive down this street and see that the teddy bears and the flowers it makes me think that it was definitely a kid i took my mind all the way away from what i was doing with today's video with all that being said man enough of the small talk let's get into some of the dumbest fights I saw while locked up. You know, it's bad when you've been locked up so many times that you have a favorite jail. And then you have the jails that you absolutely don't like. Being out here in Richmond, Chesterfield area, I spent a lot of time in all of those jails. My least favorite jail of all was Richmond City Jail. And there's a reason Richmond City Jail is not a jail that you want to be a white dude and be in. Call it what you may, you're gonna be targeted as soon as you come in for the simple fact that you're white. And that so many that have come in before you didn't stand up for themselves. The average dude coming in there is coming in there for a drug-related offense. He's strung out, he's dope sick, he's coming down off something. Them dudes, a lot of times before they'll fight, they're so sick and so ill, They'll just curl up in a ball. They don't want no smoke. They don't want no problems. And they, them dudes kind of set the pace for everybody that comes in after them. I've dealt with that. Being young, there's no other way to put it. I was stupid. I would say things out my my, my mouth at times. Pick fights. Disrespect the guards. This was early on before I learned my lessons. Back in the 90s, Richmond City Jail was notorious for the guards just beating the shit out the inmates or letting the inmates just beat the shit out of each other and they would stand by and watch you could be on the bars i've seen like literally seen dudes holding onto the bars screaming for the guard as he walks by that is somebody's child that's a human being right there guard keeps him moving he doesn't so much as hesitate doesn't even think twice about am i gonna stop or not just keeps on walking as the man gets beat we had a guard come through one time that was doing counting the way we, it's an open bay door. They would just come in, count the beds, make sure everybody was there and they would roll out, right? Well, we're in the back talking and when he comes in, he's, they just come off this one cop and just, this one guard had just got arrested, knocked his dude's teeth out. I think it was like 99, knocked the boy's teeth out. Boy's people pressed charge, guard got arrested, actually like was fired and there was a whole big thing about this thing, right? So the guards knew they couldn't put their hands on no people. They were all over the news. The, the jail was under investigation for beating the inmates. So we started getting real mouthy with the guards. Not that we weren't before, but we turned up an extra notch once we realized we could say what we wanted without the fear of having our teeth knocked out like the other dude. They come in the count and I'm in the back with a whole bunch of other dudes and we're talking. Two guards, they tell us, shut up, not enough respectful man and not no sir can you please quiet down or hey hold it down till after count that's usually what you would hear they're walking through and the guard looks back where he's at he's like yeah i need y'all to shut up my homeboy sparks it off and your goof head just starts going in on him he comes back there who said what my homeboy says i said it then my other homeboy says i said it he's my dude so i say i said it not a good look being the only white dude in the dorm at the time right what'd you say 
I said, man, you heard me say when you little bitch, like starts going in on me like a street dude running his mouth. I said, bitch, your mama's like, we're going back and forth now. Gets real greasy, real disrespectful at the mouth. I'm gonna show it all the profanity, right? Me and this dude get into it for a better part of two, three minutes going back and forth. And the other guard is telling him, come on, man, we gotta finish the count. And he's like, nah, this little punk, uh, steadily going. I told him, you ain't gonna do shit, bitch, roll out. I'm young now, 19 years old. Haven't learned these lessons yet. Well, at the time, and a lot of cities are like this. You can be from Richmond, but there's different sections of Richmond. Like you got South Side, you got North Side, you got Church Hill. There's different sections of my city. Just like a lot of y'all watching, I said it's a different section of y'all city. They were segregating the jail at that point in time because of the violence. These dudes were really out there killing each other on the streets at war. The projects were at war, so when you come in, they're gonna ask you, where are you from? From Richmond. No shit, you got locked up in Richmond. Where you at in Richmond? From South Side. All right, so they're gonna send you over to a South Side block. They're gonna send you according to where you're from. From Church Hill, that's where you're going. So the jail is broken up and it's divided. You did not wanna get caught away from your section by them other dudes, no mob down on you. Me and his guard had his tit for tat, we go back and forth. He's in my face, I'm in his face, and I'm wanting him to do something. Because if he puts his hands on me, I got enough witnesses around that it's green light go, I can bust your ass in here, not catch a street case, do my thing with you. He might have beat me, who knows? I'm not the toughest guy in the world, but I'll fight. He doesn't do that. He tells me, I got something for your punk ass, I'll be back. Everybody's, ooh, you know how it goes, running their mouths, right? He rolls out. We continue to joke. I know it's not a game. I know in the back of my mind, I just messed up. Being young and stupid, you do stupid things. You act like a youngin. I should have never opened my mouth. I put myself in the middle of a situation that had nothing to do with me. My homeboy did some dumb shit. And me being young, I followed right behind him with some even dumber shit. Put myself right up in the middle, right? As we're standing there joking in the back of my mind, I know this guard is coming back. Now I'm thinking one or two things is gonna happen. They're either about to take me to the hole just because he can, or they're gonna take me up out of here and whoop my ass. They're gonna take me down to the hole, down into the other hallway, in between the wings where there's no nobody that can see, no cameras, and they're gonna beat my ass. I go on over to my bunk, start packing my stuff. My homeboy, what are you doing, what are you doing? I go, he said he's coming back. Man, that dude ain't coming back, he's a sucker. He just run his mouth. Y'all know how dude is, man, he's coming back. So I pack all my stuff up, put all my stuff in the middle of my sheets, tie my sheet in a knot, lay my bag of commissary behind it. You used to get like a, plastic bag with your commissary in it, actual plastic trash bag, we make wine in it. Then they started punching holes in the bags. Sure enough, he shows back up. Maybe, I don't know, maybe two hours has passed, a little later now, he shows back up, comes to the front, and at this time, I'm sitting at the end of my homeboy's bunk. If you sit on somebody's bunk, you do not sit where their pillow goes, where the face area is. That is a no-no that will get you to fighting pretty quick if you sit where somebody's face goes. I'm sitting down at the foot end, he comes in and I hear him yell my name. First time he yells it, I heard it clear as day. But you ever had something happen in your mind just don't want to accept that it's happening? Or you just want to sit there and wait to see if you hear it again? It's pretty much what happened. He called my name and I acted like I didn't hear him. He waited about three, four seconds. Williams! Screamed out my name again. I popped out from between the aisles, looked up at him. He said, pack your bags, come on. Where am I going? Pack your bags, come on. Where am I going? You don't ask no questions. You pack your bags and come on. So you ain't said nothing. But my bags are packed. I knew you was coming back. I go grab my bags. <clears throat> we step out into the hallway, and he's talking about some turn around, and be cuffed up. I'd already told myself I wasn't letting this man cuff me up. In the past, when they would beat people up, that's the first thing they do is they tell you put the handcuffs on. Then you're defenseless. You can't fight back. All you can do is just kind of. I've had it happen. Just t turn your face and just. Take the punches, man, because you can't block. He tells me, turn around and cuff up. I said, I'm not cuffing up, man. Well, I'm like, where are we going? Like, you still ain't told me where we're going. And in reality, he don't have to tell me anything. But I'm curious. Am I getting beat up? What's going on? Well, he was turned around and cuff up. I said, I mean, I'm not cuffing up, man. You can call the night shift commander. This is the person that oversees the ship. Call whoever you got to. I'm not cuffing up. That's what he does. He radios, gets another officer. This officer comes down, and he oversees all those officers on that shift. So I then tell that officer the same thing I told the first officer. I said, man, I'm not cuffing up. 
why aren't you cuffing up? I said, y'all ain't gonna do me like y'all done dudes. I'm not stupid, man. And that's honestly my biggest concern is I know that once those cuffs go on, I am defenseless. It sucks being punched in the face and not being able to do anything about it. You literally just bite down as hard as you can in hopes that he don't break your jaw when he catches you. So I tell him that. I said, man, y'all ain't about to put these cuffs on me and uh, take me down the hallway, beat me up, do none of that to me. He said, you really think that's what's going to happen. You really think that I'm going to stand by and watch an officer punch you or harm you? Sir, put the cuffs on. So they take me, push me against the wall. I'm still non-compliant. They grab me, push me against the wall. The moment I say no to him, the first CO just grabs me, spins me. They shove me. They cuff me. Great. I still have not played out. There's another possibility of where I could be going. And it hadn't dawned on me yet, which was a much worse pos it was much worse than what I originally thought which was the whole or getting beat up by the guards what if they take me over here to one of these pods where these other dudes are that don't like Southside and drop me up in the mix so I'm walking with them at this point the third option has now entered my brain and I'm not gonna lie that's when the paranoia set in. That's when the worry set in. Getting beat up by them, is that a worry? Absolutely, 100%. You know, nobody wants to just get punched all in their face, right? But taking me over there and dropping me in a north side pod or, or one of these tiers that got another part of the city that's not messing with south side like that, that has a whole entire war brewing in the streets that I have nothing to do with. You drop me in that pod, it is a bad day. It's bad for me coming in just on the strength that I'm a white dude. I'm 100% going to have to fight. Don't care who you are, how big you are. If you are white, you are 100% at some point either going to fight or get beat up. So I know that with this possibility going to this new pod, I'm going to have to fight all the time. I'll be lucky if there's a couple of Richmond dudes from Southside in there that I can click up with. But fighting is going to be a constant thing. And that's not something I want to spend every day, all day doing. As we're making our way, I'm thinking we're going to do what's called G2. I was in F2 at the time, Fox Tier 2. We're heading towards what looks like G2, and then we make a left. And where are we going? They're not taking me to none of the three options I thought about. They take me to booking. Booking is where when you first come in, before you go into the drunk tank, there's a holding area where all the inmates get processed in. That's where you get fingerprinted, before you get dressed out, before you get fully strip searched and, you know, given your property, you go through booking. They take me to the front of booking is and put me inside the booking cage. I'm confused. Why am I in booking? They're doing it as a form of punishment. And even with the one guard telling me, do you think I would let this other officer put his hands on you? Well, you're clearly letting him take me somewhere he's not supposed to. You're clearly playing into this dumb shit that he's doing. So... Yeah, I think you let him. Back to the story. They take me over to booking. Booking is packed. When I mean packed, like six people is too many people. That's a lot of people in this first small cell. But there's upwards of like 12, 13 people in the cell. Step to the door. They unhandcuff me. Yo, what are y'all doing? Learn to control your mouth. We'll be back. My property sitting outside of booking or by the desk. A lot of fights take place in booking. Booking is where you got guys that are fresh off the streets that are drunk that's when guys from different parts of the city get mixed in together you and somebody you might have met in the past you don't like or you instantly realize you don't like might get into it you might just be pissed off at the fact that you're locked up lashing out at the guards and take it out on the next man so there's all types of different dudes in booking a spanish dude white dude did a whole bunch of different black dudes and then you got me dressed out in my jail uniform down here in Booking. There's this older black guy. When I say older, you got to think at the time I'm 19. So he was in his 40s. To me, that was older at that point. I don't know if it was dude was mentally ill. I know he was definitely drunk. He was really, really angry that he had been arrested. And like I said, I don't know if he was mentally ill because of the way he was acting or if that was just him being intoxicated. But this man was acting crazy, talking cursing, screaming at the guards, talking shit to people, but not addressing them, like mumbling under his breath, shadow boxing, throwing these little karate kicks. You see some crazy shit booking. 
And I'm kind of looking at this dude, looking around at the other dudes, and they're like, man, ain't this about a bitch? Why they got, I'm still wanting to know, why am I in booking? So I asked the female guard that's sitting out there, I said, hey, why they got me down in booking, man? I'm supposed to be over in F2. She said, I don't know. They brought you down here and locked you in. That's all she said. She went back to her computer. So I'm standing there, man, it's about a bitch. I go sit on the bench, and there's a dude maybe two or three feet down from me. He's got his head down, his elbows on his knees, and he's looking down, and I was like, what up, bro? Just make a conversation. It's nothing new to me to talk to people. I've been there a while. Me and him start talking, and I find out where he's from, what he's locked up for, and his charges, and all this bullshit. What, what has brought you to jail to? You know, what has brought you here? Me and him are talking, and meanwhile, this, this old black dude is just still talking shit to dude. Still, I'll punch him in his face. Oh, look at him sitting there, little bitch. He's mumbling under his breath, but he's not like addressing anybody. He's just saying it. So actually, anybody in there can take it how you want to, or whoever's sitting closest to him. He's pacing back and forth in front of me, and I'm sitting at this last bench, and the bar stretch all the way beside where like, they go back to where my shoulder is. And I'm talking to this dude where, where maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes into a conversation when I don't know what happens. Oh, what I do know is that I'm on the floor. Like one second, I'm in the middle of a conversation talking to this dude. And the next second, I'm legitimately pushing up like from belly position, laying on the floor. My fucking chin feels like I just got kicked by a horse in it because I hit chin first when I went down. Tell me what you think happened. How did I end up on the floor? Boom, 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 boom. Old man punched me. This old dude that was talking shit to everybody, that was ranting and raving, that I don't know if he was, like I said, I think he was drunk and mentally ill. He's one of those dudes that's just a, the crazy man in the neighborhood. This dude is steadily talking shit. And if you scan the room back in 1999 with me being 19 years old and you looked at everybody in there, well, I was prime suspect to get punched. I'm a 19-year-old kid. I'm by no means as big as any of these other men in here. I'm probably the youngest dude in here, and I'm a white dude. It takes me a second to realize what's just happened, what's going on, why I'm on the floor. I didn't catch on to why I was on the floor until I realized he swung at me again, and I felt his, his fist like brush the back of my head. So mission number one is what? Get to my feet push up stand up the dude is in like this i don't know kung fu panda stance got his <laughs> jumps back and when he does he trips over the dude i remember i told you there's a dude laying in the floor sick he trips falls over him i step around dude grab his dude by his shirt and start hitting on him well booking is where all the officers congregate if you do anything they are going to intervene within a five to ten second period i told you once you get in the back they don't care what happens once you get into the wings but when you're in booking, that's the one place there is cameras. That's the one place that if something happens to you and they don't, you know, do something or, or they do something to you, the cameras are going to catch it. I grabbed dude, dudes that fell over the other dude, grabbed him by a shirt and I just start fucking, start wailing on him, hitting him from the side. About that time, it's like I matrixed. Like they opened the cell door and I just felt my whole body shift from where I was at and outside the cell. They grabbed me, slammed against the bars. Flip my arms behind me and cuff my hands. They go in. The old man has messed himself up. I keep calling him old. He was a man. The man has messed himself up from where he's done fell over this other dude. I didn't do much damage to him. I gave him about four or five groggy neck head shots, face shots while he was on the ground. That damn fall and that, that sudden impact of head versus concrete when he fell was what did the most damage to him. So he's still laying on the floor, drunk, groggy, and mumbling and the other dude is th that he fell over has done got up and is sitting over the side where the toilet is now they go in they check on the old man and meanwhile they've got me pressed against the bars like y'all all y'all seen was me hitting the man y'all didn't see this dude just just rocky balboa my ass off this bench right they pin me they pin my arms behind my back what are you doing out there they're screaming there's all this commotion going on because there's so many different guards down at booking an intake like, at any given moment, that could be seven, eight guards. Other guards are trying to run over and figure out what's going on by now. They got me cuffed up against the bars. I don't say anything. What's, what, why are you attacked, old man? I just stand here pissed off. This is what they wanted. They brought me down to booking because they knew that my hardest time in the jail was either going to be in another wing where all my ops are, where Southside is hated, or down in booking where shit just constantly pops off. 
they take me out after they they do all that. There's a bench sitting there, like a metal bench with these bars, and they put one handcuff on and they cuff me to the bench. I would sit on that bench with that old man in that cell, talking shit. I'm talking shit to him like he's maybe a good 15 feet from me for the next two three hours. I just sit here handcuffed. We're coming on maybe 10 o'clock at night by now. After about the third hour, this officer comes back down there and tells me, grab my property. He's done heard what's going on. He was in another part of the jail when the, when the fight takes off. Grab your stuff real quick, man. They uncuff me from the bench, take the cuff off me. I stand up, pick my bags up, and they take me back to F2. Now, at this point, I'd been in F2 about a part of two months. I had issues when I first got in there. I got into it with a dude behind the phone. I got into it with a dude behind commissary. And then some guys instigated. I told you, as a white dude, you're just going to have to fight. Some guys instigated a fight between me and another dude. And it was like one of them fourth grade things where people are just talking shit. And the two of y'all get irritated over what they're saying. And we ended up fighting. But now I've been in here long enough that I don't have beef with nobody in here. I've been in here longer than a lot of these guys because guys are going off to prison. Guys are making bond. Guys are... You know, going home, I come back in, dudes. Oh, that's what's up. They brought Jay back. Hey, Jay, where they take you to? Jay, where they, where they whooped your ass? Mind you, now I've got a big ass knot on my chin from where at the time I had a chin strap, a really thin chin strap. I've got a knot on my chin, and all this shit is red and swollen from where I hit the ground. So to them, it looks like I got took up out of it. Oh, hell no, nah, y'all don't beat Jay up. Jay, what they did to you? I don't even want to tell these dudes that I got took down the booking and just got molly whopped by an old head. I tell them the story. Everybody starts tripping, laughing. Oh, dude, you got knocked out by an old head. We find out you got beat up. I ain't get beat up, man. The dude sucker punched me down booking. I punched him a bunch of times. Man, that old man, look. Look at your damn. Jay got beat up down booking. Stupid, stupid. Just like that, I was back in my pod. Stupid stupid fight all i had to do to avoid that whole situation was not open my mouth to you guys that not done time and do not in any way shape or form take what took place as cool it was not getting it was not cool getting snuck getting knocked in the floor like that the crazy part is when a man hit me i didn't have no bruise the back of my head was sore like if somebody had slapped me really hard but there was no knot no, nothing on the back of my head. I still had hair at that time. Shout out to my hair. Rest in peace, hairline. There was no bruising or anything from where he hit me. No knots, no whelps. Just that big ass like knot on my chin from where I hit the floor. Me running my mouth to that guard taught me a lot that day. A, don't put yourself in situations you shouldn't be in. Control your mouth. Impulse control something clearly that old man didn't have they just thought hey let me punch him or maybe hey the guard told him punch him for whatever reason me opening my mouth put me in that entire situation at the moment my homeboy started running his mouth to that guard that was their situation I had no reason to speak up but i'm a young boy i'm still a young boy i want to run my mouth i want to jump in the mix come to the defense of my homeboy and that started the whole series of events from that to me and the art me and the guard arguing me thinking i'm gonna get beat up taken to the hole taken over to, to g building all these events came because i ran my mouth to the guard he couldn't beat me up he knew that he couldn't physically put his hands on me like he wanted to and get away with it but he knew that if he took me down booking the chances of me getting into a fight down there being a white guy were 99.9%. .9%. And what happened? Not only did I get in a fight, I got snuck, laid out in the floor, barely got my thing off afterwards, and then snatched up out the cell. All right, so as you can see, I am home. I'm glad to be home. Long days at work. What are you doing, buddy? Nothing. <laughs> glad to be home with the family. Firing everybody was a blessing and a curse. I have spent so much time at work. The time I usually spend making videos, I've got tools in my hands all day, every day, working, right? Yep. So that's what we do. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazy world inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me.
Salute. Salute. Salute.